A year ago I reviewed the Lindemann Lime Tree Bridge and I liked it. This time I take a look at the Lime Tree Network in the updated second version. Basically it is the second version of the bridge but with integrated digital to analog conversion. Lindemann is a German company founded in 1993 that is technology driven in a good way. According to their website they use the most advanced design tools and measuring methods. Yet the sonic outcome is always of prime importance. Our ears are the key measurement instruments. The Lime Tree series of products all use the same compact housing. By the way, if you would translate Lindemann to English it would be Lime Tree Man, hence the name. Despite the size of the Lime Tree Network too, it is a fully fledged network player and rune endpoint. Let's see where it is to be used. The Network 2 is to be connected to the analog inputs of an amplifier, like AUX or CD, using RCA cables. Of course you need a set of loudspeakers or headphones too. The network connection on the Network 2 is to be connected to your network router so you can stream music from sources on the internet, like internet radio and streaming services like Spotify, Tidal, Cobus and the like. If you have music on your computer or NAS, the Network 2 will connect to that over the router. An infrared remote control comes with the unit and lets you play, pause and skip tracks, but selecting music is done on a smartphone or tablet. If a CD-ROM or DVD-ROM drive is connected, CDs can be played too over the network too. Time to take a closer look. The compact aluminium box is externally powered by a medical grade Meanwell switch mode power supply of the Walworth variant. The network too itself measures 120 by 120 by 40 mm and weighs 0.3 kg. On the front left a switch to bring it in and out standby mode. An LED to the right shows the status. Then further to the right a multicolor LED that indicates the sampling rate of the music playing. When DSD tracks are playing the DSD LED further to the right lights up. A 3.5 mm headphone jack and the infrared eye complete the tour of the front. On the rear we see the 5V DC input, the network socket, a USB 2.0 bus for the external storage or CD drive and the Wi-Fi antenna socket. The WPS button lets you connect the network to over Wi-Fi to your network provided your Wi-Fi access point, often the router, also has a WPS functionality. And then there are the analog left and right outputs on RCA. Inside we see a circuit board covering the bottom, with left the filtering of the 5V DC power. Then a small Motorola microprocessor that controls basic operation functions. The real work is done by the Stream Unlimited Stream 810 audio streaming module, a ready to use streaming solution that is also used by the Lime Tree Bridge. It is a good and solid solution that uses DNLA UPnP AV but also accepts Rune RAD signals and has Bluetooth BLE 4.2. It handles all network traffic and is based on a dual core IMX7 processor. This way audio companies can focus on what they do best, audio, and leave the network tech to the supplier. Back to the main board. The digital to analog conversion is done here with the ES9038Q2M DAC chip, clocked by a MEMS femto clock specified at 500 femtoseconds. MEMS stands for Micro Electromechanical Systems, very tiny devices that combine mechanical and electronic functions. The ES9038 has seven filters aboard that can be set in the Lindemann app. The volume control in the DAC chip is not used. Instead an analog volume control by JCR is used that is based on a resistor network. The output buffering is taken care of by a Texas Instrument op-amp and the two Fujitsu relays with gold over silver contacts take care of the mute functions. The headphone amp is the TI OPA1622. Two. 
Since there are no controls on the network, apart from the standby switch and the WPS button, all controls is via the Lindemann app or from any other DNA or UPnP AV app. When started up, it searches for DNA renderers and when it finds the network 2, it goes to this screen. If you use more network or bridge players, they will show up and offer multi-room playback. Since I only had one network 2, I could not test that. When you select music server, it shows the music server, or servers in my case, that is present in your network. Let's select a minimum server on the Synology DJ 119A 100 Euro NAS that is fitted with an 8 terabyte hard disk containing music and running the minimum server DLA server software. Let's go to Artist and find the Academie für Alte Musik Berlin. and select one of the three albums I have, Bach's Overture number 2 and 4. As can be seen, this works all quick and clear, although that is partly due to the use of the free minimum server. The DLA server that comes with the Synology NAS is a lot slower, but Lindemann can't be blamed for that, of course. Then Internet Radio. Arable Radio gives access to all kinds of Internet Radio. Let's see what's recommended. Local stations indeed leads to just that. Tidal, Deezer, Cobus, Hi-Res Audio and Spotify are the streaming services that are supported. Let's open Tidal and search for the Beatles. This is not the quickest way to play Tidal tracks, despite the 350 megabit per second internet connection I have. Not really a problem since the Tidal app can send the audio to the network too, as can be seen here. Then a short peek at the settings. Here the Wi-Fi settings can be set. This obviously only works when there is already a network connection over a temporary network cable. Then the language settings, that are limited to German and English. Device settings let you choose from seven reconstruction filters listed in the manual. The other options are self-explanatory. I tested the Network 2 in my reference setup 2, where the amplifier is the Marantz KI Pearl Lite, a great class AB amplifier, tweaked by the legendary Kenny Shiwata. It drives the Acoustic Energy Radiance 1 loudspeakers, connected over Kimber 4PR loudspeaker cable. They are supported by the rel 5 subwoofer that is connected to the loudspeaker terminals on the Marantz using the cable that came with the sub. The network switch is the Optron Audio Ether region with the Optron Audio Ultra Caps 1.2 power supply. The equipment is housed in a target rack and my iPad Pro was used for the Lindemann and Rune app. Tidal was streamed for my iMac 27 inch. Network 2 puts down an impressive sound field that is carried by a powerful, well controlled and deep lows. A clean and open but not clinical mid range and a refined highs that is almost fully clear of sibilance problems that often spoils the sound of digital players in this price range. The seven reconstruction filters bring clear but subtle differences in sound quality, especially voices the piano right hand and brass let you hear the differences, provided your amp and speakers are up to it. I like the minimum phase slow roll off filter best. In particular the stereo image sounded very promising, so I connected the network 2 to my reference setup 1 2. The base of my reference setup 1 uses the Air Acoustics AX520 amplifier that drives the PMC FAC12 signature loudspeakers over AudioQuest Robinhood Zero loudspeaker cable. The Network 2 was connected to the amp over Crystal Cable RCA interlinks. When Rune was used, it was the server part of the Grim Audio Mu1, which is functionally the same as an Intel NUC i3. So the audio files are not passed through the FPGA scaler and reclocker board of the Grim. The connection to the SOTM SNH10G network switch 
was over the network acoustics muon streaming system that comprises of the muon ethernet filter and the muon streaming ethernet cable. All totally over the top I agree. Both the switch and the ethernet filter cost each as much as the network too. Here the stereo image is deep and wide with the instruments placed free from the background and certainly free from the loudspeakers. Siebelen's reproduction was even cleaner now. Compared to the Aurelic Ares G2 and the Mitek Brugham with Ferron Hipsus power supply that used to be placed here, resolution is of course lower, voices are less clean and so on. When the Mitek was fed from the Grim Audio Mu1 AES EBU output the difference was even bigger. But having said that, I had no problems listening to the Network 2 for hours, something some other digital players in this price range don't manage. Don't be fooled by its appearance. It might be a small device physically, its sound qualities are impressive for its price. I have also listened using the S-Booster 5 volt power supply and that gave some improvement in sound quality but already using the power supply that came with it gave a very satisfactory sound quality. Priced around a thousand euros, it is worth every cent and more. It finds its place in my reference setup somewhere close to the top of setup 2A. See the show notes for a full description of my setups. And that brings us to the end of this video. As usual, there will be a new video next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially, especially in this time when views are up while ad money is down. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I am Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.